Now coming to the investigations, when we are talking about the investigations, there is a huge list of investigations that we might have to do uh, in a case of, excuse me, in the case of nephrotic syndrome. But remember uh, that we break down the investigations into the uh, 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 why we are doing those things and what we are going to look for those investigations and in the hierarchy and how do we do. So first and foremost is to diagnose the nephrotic syndrome. So we do the, the urine uh, for proteinuria. Either initially we do the early morning dipstick test, we do spot protein uh, uh, creatinine ratio, or we do 24 hours urine protein creat uh, 24 hours uh, protein urea or quantifying the uh, amount of protein the child is excreting over the 24 hours period. This helps in defining the severity of protein urea. And also we look for the serum albumin, which tells us about the hypoalbuminemia and the cholesterol. Usually the cholesterol is high, the albumin is low, and there is a massive protein urea when we are talking uh, in terms of the 24 hours urine or the protein creatinine ratio. And this defines the nephrotic syndrome. Now, the second thing is to look if the patient is hypovolumic because this is something which is sometimes very dicey. Remember a child who is completely swollen up or puffed up. Now, this child, it's very difficult to find out if the circulating volume is normal or low. So we have to look for the clinical signs of shock. The shock that we are looking at is tachycardia, blood pressure, metabolic acidosis. Now, to look for the circulating volume, to find out if the child is having a normal circulating volume or decreased circulating volume, sometimes it is very difficult to just look at the child because the edema, it's very difficult to find out. So the uh, usually what we do is an echo where we look at the, uh, the heart size and also the uh, filling of the cardiac chambers. So if your cardiac chambers are filling normally, that means the circulating volume is normal. If your cardiac chambers are not filling normally, that means your circulating volume is low. The other thing that we do is an abdominal ultrasound to look at the IVC, which is your inferior vena cava. So usually you see the inferior vena cava, which is filled and it shows the movement that is it is going up and down with the respiration. Whereas in case if the child is severely hypovolumic, then you will see that IVC is completely collapsed and it is not, there is very little movement uh, with the respiration. So that gives you an indirect indication about the circulating volume. Then we look at the, uh, uh, the investigations to look at the uh, the, the urine functions, uh, the kidney function. So we do the urea, the, we do the creatinine, do urea and creatinine uh, to look at the underlying uh, renal functions. Usually in the minimal change disease, urea and creatinine is normal. Whereas in the case of uh, um, the uh, other diseases, especially your membranoproliferative or membranous bromonephritis, uh, you will see the urea creatinine, which is on a higher side. Then we also try to do the investigation to find out any underlying disease condition, like we are doing the urine microscopy. Again, we are looking, apart from the protein urea, we are looking at the hematuria. So in case there is an elevated hematuria, uh, then we have to think about uh, either FSGS or membranoproliferative or membranous type of bromonephritis. We are also looking at the complement levels where we are looking at C3 and C4. So usually in case of minimal change disease, your complements are normal. Whereas in the case of membranoproliferative or it is associated with autoimmune diseases like SLE, etc., then your complement levels are on a lower side. You also do the test to rule out hepatitis B, hepatitis C, VDRL. You are looking at your uh, ASO titers, you are looking at anti-DNA to rule out your autoimmune diseases. So these are the investigations which are usually done in case if the picture uh, is not conforming with your nephrotic, uh, your minimal change disease. If the child is between 1 to 10 years, there is only a gross proteinuria, there is no hematuria, uh, the blood pressure is normal, the complement level is normal, then we are not doing all the investigations to prove uh, any secondary causes. The last investigation, especially 
in in the indian scenario is to rule out any infections uh, and especially your tuberculosis because you are going to start your child on steroids so in case there is an associated infection or sepsis this might flare up because of use of the steroid so we have to uh, exclude any infection or tuberculosis so uh, again a little bit more emphasis on your urine analysis so remember apart from proteinuria we are looking at hematuria so in case there is an associated hematuria or there are acanthocytes in the urine so either it is uh, uh, post streptococcal nephritic uh, uh, glomerulonephritis or it is uh, your membrane proliferative type of uh, uh, nephrotic syndrome the other thing is that you are uh, also doing a renal biopsy now renal biopsy is not done in all the conditions in all the cases of uh, nephrotic syndrome you do renal biopsy only in case either ch child does not respond i'll be coming to the indications little later so you will uh, do the renal biopsy only in the special circumstances now other thing to remember is to look at the complement levels very important that we do the complement level because in case of your uh, low complement level we are thinking about an sle you are thinking of post streptococcal glomerulonephritis you are thinking of hus induced glomerulonephritis so these are the conditions where the child might not do so well with a steroid to uh, start them on the other medications as well another thing is to look for the gene therapy. in case we have the condition where it is but the child does not respond to uh, the uh, therapy then we do uh, the gene uh, genetic study so in case there is a monogenetic uh, genome which is involved i told you about the genetic uh, you know, markers that we are looking at so these are the uh, places where the children respond very badly to the steroids and uh, they develop an end stage renal disease very fast so these are the children where we have to prognosticate them we have to inform the parents about the bad prognosis and probably start them on biological agents little early now coming to the uh, need for renal biopsy as i said that renal biopsy is not required in all the cases especially if we are thinking about the minimal change disease we do not require renal biopsy but renal biopsy is indicated in the condition in case if uh, the age group is less than 1 year or beyond 10 years of age there is associated renal failure in the onset associated macroscopic hematuria or persistent microscopic hematuria if there is an associated uh, features of sle uh, hinox schollen purpurea hepatitis b etc or if the child does not respond to the steroids so these are the conditions where we require or resort to do the renal biopsy in a case of nephrotic syndrome we evaluate the child so when we have got this child with nephrotic syndrome every day we are supposed to che check the weight of the child on the onset when the child comes we have to check for the height weight and blood pressure they should be recorded in the initial uh, uh, presentation and then weight and blood pressure should be checked every day uh, weight is very important an increase in the weight tells us that the child is not responding and edema is not coming down whereas the decrease in the weight even if edema takes time to come down tells us that the child has started responding to the steroids now physical examination has to be done to rule out any other systemic disorders like rashes joint swelling at the initial presentation you are supposed to check for the height weight and blood pressure and then weight and blood pressure has to be checked every day you have to do this physical examination to rule out any of the disease condition like systemic uh, diseases by looking at the rashes by looking at uh, the the joint swelling uh, for the congenital syphilis you are looking at the clinical features you are looking at the liver enzymes you are looking at the hep hepatic enlargement in case there is an associated hepatitis b or c diseases etc definitely actively look for any infections so always do the head to toe examination and also do the other septic markers like your blood count cr blood culture complete uh, examination with ultrasound abdomen to rule out any infection again coming to the ultrasound is an again an important part of a investigation but evaluation also look at your ultrasound at the onset uh, note down the type of uh, uh, the 
eco texture of the uh, uh, kidneys that you are seeing also the size of the kidney initially uh, the uh, the kidneys will be little edematous they will look little bigger otherwise the structure will be normal in case there is a scarring or the kidneys look shriveled then there is some associated chronic renal disease which was going in underlying uh, in this child then rule out your congenital syphilis sle or autoimmune nephritis etc